What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and we've got ourselves an HP Omen gaming PC that we're going to upgrade because, well, it doesn't perform all that great and it doesn't look all that good. So let's get into it. Let's go. All right guys, so the object of this video and little project here is to upgrade this PC, get it up to spec with some more modern components, get it looking good aesthetically, and then ultimately get it back off to my buddy for his son to take off to college to have something that he can not only do homework on, but also have a pretty good little gaming rig too. Now this video is sponsored by Cooler Master. They did provide over some parts, which we will get into later on down the line in this video. So stay tuned to that. And also thank you Cooler Master for sponsoring this video. But getting right into it, guys, what we got here is, well, it's a pretty basic PC. It's a Ryzen 5 3500. So that might sound kind of odd to you guys. And actually, well, it kind of is. It's actually just an OEM style CPU. So it's only six cores but it's actually still a pretty good CPU. So we're gonna keep that CPU. And then basically a couple other things that we might be keeping here is this power supply, which is actually a gold rated 80 plus gold power supply from HP and it's 500 watts. And we do have some auxiliary PCIe down here that we can hold on to. That way we can power a mid grade GPU, no problem. Now, as far as GPU, what we got here is a PCIe only power 1650, a very basic, not so awesome video card. This is probably fine if you want to do some very light esports gaming, but I ran into some video cards that I bought from a crypto miner here recently that I got for a good deal. And by the way, guys, if you haven't checked out that video, make sure you do, but it'll be a good video card that we can swap out. So we're just going to take that video card out and not run with it. Aside from that, um, we do have some decent RAM in here, but the only thing is like OEMs, like HP lo oops, loves to do is install one stick. So we're running in single channel mode and this stick is actually a 2666, eight gig stick. So aside from that guys, really we're tearing out power supply. We are tearing out CPU and ditching the rest, even the motherboard. The motherboard is very HP OEM style. There really isn't a whole lot to it that we can keep. Can you use it? Can you swap to another case? Sure, but I wanted something that had a little bit more longevity, a little bit more future proofing to give back to my buddy for his son. So we've got some parts set aside for that. Oh, and one last thing, we do have a hard drive. So the system did boot into a hard drive, which is okay i guess for a basic system that is not really going to be doing much other than kind of like homework or office use but it's just a i believe 500 gig yeah 500 gig hd seagate drive which we'll keep just because it'll be auxiliary storage for the pc but we don't even have an nvme drive here even though this hp motherboard supports it i guess that's probably an upgrade option that you could put forward to on HP when you buy one of these. So this PC does have some pretty decent bones and I might actually make use of these parts in a later video, so stay tuned to that. But we gotta get out the parts that we're interested in and get it into the new system. So let's get into that. Let's remove this CPU cooler and get out that CPU. And this screw pattern is Looking very OEM style, even uses a star bit I had to use on my iFixit, not a typical Phillips head, so very OEM. That's all right though. Oh, that's coming off real easy, not sticking. That's good. Always scary to remove a Ryzen CPU. Okay, we loose. All right, we're fully off. I'm gonna pull the fan header off. There we go. And wow, that's hardly any thermal paste at all. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely very weak on the thermal paste application. I can actually even read Ryzen through the thermal paste here. It might be hard for you guys to see, but I'm going to pull the CPU out. That's, that's pretty thin. You know, let me give you a little close up. You can almost see, yeah, right there. Almost see Ryzen through the thermal paste application. So our thermal paste application will be a lot better once we clean this up and get it into the new system. But onto the next thing, which we are, we wanted the hard drive we said before. So actually I'll just pull that out and get it out of the way. And the, really honestly, we just need to unplug a lot of the power connections. Cause we said we're going to keep this power supply, which is a decent power supply. I think it, there's no problems with going with it. We're not putting super high end components back into the new rig. We're doing a little more there as you guys will see but this 500 watt 80 plus gold supply from hp should be plenty fine so let's get that zipped off and there's some screws on the back actually let me just make sure everything is unplugged looks like just a lot of 
clips here. But this is very OEM too. Uh, man, I can't even get to that plug without taking out the GPU, so that's fun. All right, so let's take out the GPU, I guess. There we go. Okay, so little dinker 1650, I believe. Yes, little dinker 1650. I mean, this is fine, really, for like, say, video out, etc. but uh, it'll play some eSports titles. I believe this is just like a two gig card. I didn't really look too much into it, but this thing is very light, like super light. This will be fine for maybe a flip, like throw it into like an Optiplex or something and charge 50 bucks for this GPU or whatever. So anyway, getting that out of the way, just honestly, so I can get the motherboard power clip out. It is nice to see though here, as you guys will see here shortly, that the motherboard power, actually it's very tied down still, is a 24 pin. So it's kind of more standard. That gives me hopes with being able to take this motherboard and actually flip it and put it into a different chassis. So let's see here. Now I gotta just figure out how to get the rest of the power out of here. Flip it this way. Uh-oh, now I'm realizing, I'm hoping that I can use the CPU power still because that was just a four pin on the motherboard. I hope I have some options here. We'll see. We'll have to, we'll have to take the thing completely out to know for sure. All right, so power supply should be relatively free. There's a little button to push, I think, down there to get it out. Yep, there we go. Pretty standard with OEMs. Got some clips holding some cables on still. And got a few more cables to play around with. So I'll probably cut to that, guys, once I have all these cables free because this is going to take a little bit. We've got some OEM things that we're working on here. So we'll cut back to you once I have this power supply out. Alrighty, guys, so we've got the power supply out finally. These little Omen PCs are, are fun. <laughs> Found out there's a screw that's kind of down towards the bottom of the motherboard tray that actually holds the back panel on. So once you unscrew that, you're able to push down on the back panel and it slides out. So if you have one and you're wondering how to do that, well, there you go. But we've got the power supply out. I wanted to get it fully out of the system because I couldn't really see too well in there and I couldn't see if I had the proper connections I was gonna need for the upgrades. And yes, we are kind of in a, a bit of a pickle here. So, but what we're running into is we got pretty much power for everything else that we need other than CPU. So although we could jank style probably run a four pin that we have here on our motherboard that we're going to be upgrading to which is a eight pin but i really want to advise that and this is kind of purpose built for this hp motherboard so unfortunately the part list is dwindling on what we're actually going to be taking with us and as it really stands we've got now just two parts that were taken with us from this omen machine however i do have a power supply that's gonna, I think, actually end up working pretty well with the upgrades that we're gonna be doing. It's actually provided to me by Intermax. I was kind of saving it for a different build, but inadvertently, Intermax has now become a sponsor of this video. So I'm gonna clear off the table. We're gonna just basically make do with the only few parts that were taken from the original system, being this HP Omen machine, and then start discussing our upgrades and get into the rebuild process. Alrighty guys, so we've got all the upgrade parts out on the table, and yes, it kind of just looks like a brand new PC build at this point, which it pretty much almost is. Unfortunately, we weren't able to take a lot from that HP machine. I was hoping to salvage a few extra parts, but simply was not able to do that. No knocks on that machine in particular, and I'm sure it's fine for what it is, but my client was wanting a few more upgrades, so here's what we got. So starting with the biggest part we have here in the room, let's talk about what we got here for the case. And this is the Master Box 500 provided by Cooler Master. So Cooler Master, thank you again for providing over this part. This is one of their new lineup cases, so I haven't had a chance to take a look at it. I haven't seen much content on it. It's got some awesome RGB features, or it looks like there's some lighting on the front, as well as it's got some RGB fans, so that should look pretty sweet. Moving on to the other part provided by Cooler Master, we've got one of their coolers now. We didn't necessarily need a high-end or very fancy cooler, but I wanted something that could add that little aesthetic RGB pop to the system, and I asked for one of their tower coolers, which is the MA612 Stealth. It basically looks like a Hyper 212, just a little bit beefed up. It looks like there's some bigger fin density and some extra fans. So it looks pretty sweet and I can't wait to see what that looks like in the build. 
So moving on into an area that is going to be a pretty significant upgrade where the HP machine seriously lacked is in the memory department. So what we got here is a kit from XPG, their Spectrix D60G. I've never really heard of it or used it, but I've seen it online before and I thought it looked pretty sweet. But anyway, what we're after was just more capacity and faster speed. So what we got here is a 16 gig kit 3200 mega transfers at cast latency 16 so we're doubling the memory capacity and we're definitely way up in the speeds moving on to another part that's going to be a relatively large upgrade for this machine is the storage now we do have a spinning drive that the old system was running on but that is pretty slow for nowadays standards so what we got here is a team group 512 gig nvme drive these things are still so cheap on all the online markets. So if you guys are looking for an upgrade, make sure you check out some of these budget options because this is gonna be great for a uplift in system boot performance and load times. So for a motherboard to button up all those parts on, we've got a Gigabyte DS3H B450 Wi-Fi edition that actually ended up picking up on Amazon Warehouse for around $65. And this is going to be a great option. It's going to allow us the upper increased memory capacity. It's going to allow us to eventually upgrade CPU and GPU. So this is going to be a good budget option for a strong upgrade future. So speaking of strong upgrade futures, I might as well talk about the power supply I ended up going with, which now Entermax has now entered the fold into a parts provider and now sponsor of this video. Now I did have this power supply sitting around for a build that I was going to do later, but as we know, we ran into an issue with the HP power supply. So we got to go with this one now because it's the only thing I have on hand and I got to get this build done. However, though, I thought this power supply would add an extra level of pop to this build just because the case has a window where the power supply sits and this power supply has got some nice RGB features that will be visible through that. Although 850 watts is crazy overkill, it's what I had on hand and sometimes that's what you got to do. But I guess for the future, we know that my client's son is not going to have to worry about power ever because he's going to have more than enough to power even some of the biggest, most craziest power hungry GPUs out there. So for GPU, we've got a GTX 1063 gig. Now this is not a super huge upgrade over the previous GPU. I mean, it's pretty sizable considering that the other GPU was just only powered by PCIe power. So we've got one that requires obviously dedicated PCIe power, only a six pin. So this giant power supply isn't really gonna make a whole lot of sense. Although that's, you know, setting them up for the future. However, we got a really good deal on this card. That's kind of the reason why we're including it. It's kind of the initial cost that I told my client in order to get some upgrades for this PC. But this GTX 1063 gig is still gonna be plenty good for gaming performance and basically all 1080p levels on most modern titles. Hey guys, that is the parts that is going to be the upgrades. We've got several things to address here, and obviously we're gonna put in our CPU from our old system and our hard drive, which unfortunately those are the only two parts that we're carrying over. But let's get into the build here. Let's get this all set up, and I'm really excited to see how this thing looks.
check that out man that looks great and i am super happy with how this turned out and i can't wait to hear how happy my client's son's going to be this is quite a step up from that little hp omen gaming pc However though, guys, this wasn't also a budget focused build or a guide or anything like that. This is simply just me putting together something for my client and taking you guys along for the ride. If you are looking for something like a budget build and or a guide, then check out this video where we built up a $400 gaming PC.